Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Chart Accent Line Chart. Now, the Chart Accent Line Chart is, as the name implies, a line chart, but it really gives you the ability to add some rich annotations into the chart itself. So, uh, what, that, what that means is you could actually add in, add in annotations at an individual data point. So, you can pick out one little data point on the line chart and decide to add annotations to that. You can take an entire series, so I can select all of Seattle or all of Houston in the chart on the right hand side and create annotations just on those. Or you can even do ranges, so you can uh, look at a range of values within the chart and you can even create bands like you see here on the right hand side, either vertically or horizontally you can create those bands. So it's a really interesting way to take line charts to the next level. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy this one as far as the type of annotations you can apply. You can even do things like trend lines, so you'll see how to do that here in a moment. But let's go ahead and walk you through how you can get started with the chart accent line chart through a demonstration that we have ready to go. All right, so as usual, we do need to start by going to go ahead to get some data here. So I'm going to go up to the get data section and we're going to pull in some data from an Excel workbook. That Excel workbook is going to be an example that we're going to use here. So let me take a step back to my data folder and we're going to use the file here called monthly state sales. And I'll go ahead and select open to pull in the spreadsheet from that workbook that we want to use. The spreadsheet here is called sales. Now, as you look at the data here, it's kind of key to point out the way that the data is organized. If you want to be able to use the chart accent line chart with multiple series, meaning multiple lines on the line chart, then you do need to have your measures stored in separate columns like this. So for example, what I mean is I couldn't have a state column and a revenue column and then be able to uh, kind of parse out each of the lines based on the values I have in the state column. Uh, in this scenario, with this visual, you actually have to have a column for each of the measures that you want. You can't break out a measure based on a categorical value like state. So keep that in mind. That is one limitation of this visual uh, that you cannot have um, some kind of category split up multiple lines for you. All right, but we do have in here some information that's going to show us each of the months and the sales that we had in each state by month. So I'll go ahead and select the sales spreadsheet here and select load to bring this into our Power BI data model. And then once this comes into our data model, we'll go ahead and bring in from our custom visual gallery, we'll go ahead and pull from the store here. We're gonna pull in the chart accent line chart. So I'll go ahead and search for from the store and search for uh, line chart is one way you can do it. It's actually in here as one word and you can find the chart accent line chart pretty quickly here. And I'll go ahead and select add to now bring that into our visualization pane. Okay, so now with that added, we'll go ahead and bring in that visual into our design surface. And I'll make it take up pretty much the entirety of the screen here for the most part. And then we're gonna play around with this visual quite a bit because there's quite a few things you can do with it. There's actually not that much in the format section, but there's a ton you can do within the visual itself. So we're gonna take a look at how this can be done. So you will notice that there is a categorical data section that you can affect. This categorical data value that you bring in is going to affect the horizontal axes of the chart. And so if I bring in something like the month into the category data, once we get some kind of a measure, we don't have any measure yet or any value to be able to visualize. But once we do, we'll be able to see the months showing horizontally. And let's go ahead and do this. Let's bring in California, Florida, and New York all within inside of the measure data section. You'll notice there is not not a way of adding a series. So there's no series here where you can bring in, like I said earlier, a state column and have it automatically create each of the different series for you. So you actually have to have the data organized in this way to be able to use the chart accent line chart. All right, so we've got some decent looking information in here. You will, however, notice that the months are actually sorted alphabetically and not chronologically. This is a traditional Power BI problem that you might have to solve. And the problem is that right now we're bringing in the text for month, which is January, February, March, but it's sorting it alphabetically, April, August, December, February, January, so on and so forth. So to fix that problem, we're gonna select the month column here. We'll go up to the modeling ribbon on the very top, and we'll tell it that we wanna sort the month name by the month number. And you can see here, I have a calendar month number column that if we select that, it will fix our sort order correctly now to be able to see all the values that we have. Now you'll also notice here, if you glance at this, you'll see that the data is primarily at the top end of our chart. And uh, some of the things you can do is you could actually eliminate some of the, the y-axis here on the left-hand side if you wanted to. You could actually get rid of portions of that and actually have the starting value be much higher if you wanted to. Traditionally, you don't want to do that with charts because it's a little deceptive. But for the purposes of just working with this and showing you what it can do, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to go over to the format paintbrush area here. 
and you'll see the y-axis properties. This is really the only property that is significant to this visual. The other ones are just generic ones. So we're going to go ahead and select title though, and I'm going to tell it that I want the title to start, or the, uh, I shouldn't say title, the y-axis, and we're going to tell it that I want the y-axis to start instead of starting at zero, I'm instead going to have it start at something more like 1.2 million or something like that, okay? Just because we have so many values, and I want to show you it's possible, so we're going to say 1.2 million. And I made a little bit of a boo-boo there. Let me take one period out, one uh, decimal place out. There we go. And so now we can see it's a little bit easier to read the chart. You could change that even more if you wanted to. I can make it 1.4 million and then make it much easier to read if you wanted to. Again, that's a little deceiving to do that because it, traditionally charts are thought of as this is my zero point. But just for the purposes of being able to read this data a little better, we're going to go ahead and do that. You can also change the text that appears on the y-axis. So if I wanted to, I can change the text here and say that I want this to say total sales. And you'll see total sales now appear on the y-axis. You can also change the top end or the, the ending or the maximum value that you have as well if you wanted to. Okay, so you have a couple of options there as far as, you how, as far as how you visualize things. Now, how do you work with this? How do you create annotations? That's really our next piece. Uh, there's a couple of different forms of annotations you can create. One of the forms of annotations that you can create is this little banding effect. So check this out. You can actually highlight a certain area of your chart, and I can tell it that maybe I want to go all the way down to 2 million here. And I can create a new band here of values. Okay, so you can kind of create this band of values in here if you wanted to. I could even bump this up even higher if I wanted to. Say I made this something like 2.49 million. You can do something like that and really kind of change the banding and give it a more, more narrow effect there. You can also do things like this. If I wanted to, I can change the color of that band. If I don't like the color of this, this gray that's come in, you can see this value range on the bottom. You can change the color here and maybe I want to make it something more like a dark green. You can do something like that, and you can see it's a little bit too dark. So you might adjust the opacity here a little bit to bring it down so you can still see the values that are behind it. You can do a few other things here. This label that you see in the top right, you can do some formatting of that label. For example, you'll notice that the font can be bumped up right here, so I can bump up the font size a little bit. You can also change the location of where it's at. So right now it's in the top right, but you can see there's this anchor point here that you can move it from the top right to the top left. And this is the top left within the design surface. You'll also notice you can put it in the top left of the overall chart here if you wanted to. So that kind of puts it out of bounds from where you can actually see it. We're going to put it in the top left of our area that we're working with. And then you can also add in and do some formatting. So right now you can see it has one decimal place. If you don't want any decimal place, you can fix that just by changing the decimal places right here. So you have some ability to do that next to the text label in the label section. We can also actually adjust the label itself. You'll see the two pound signs there have to do with the fact it's a numeric value. But what we can do is we can actually type in front of that and say something like these are high volume regions, or just say high volume perhaps. And we're saying high volume is somewhere between 2 million and 2.5 million here with inside of the range that we're looking at. So it's a nice little way that you can kind of adjust and look at how these ranges work. And you can add multiple ranges if I wanted to. I could add, uh, let's say, a range that's going across the x axis in the bottom. So say, for example, I wanted a, it looks like October is kind of our peak season for this particular industry. And so I can select October or I can select a range of months. So you can kind of highlight a range of months here. Uh, by the way, you can, if you ever make a mistake, you can come undo here in the, in the top left. You can also reset everything if you wanted to. But I can undo the one mistake I might have made just by clicking the undo button here. You can also do control Z. But if I wanted to highlight October, I can select October here. You can see it's brought in a new region or a range here call that's called October. But you can certainly rename that if you wanted to. If you don't want it to be called October, instead you can come in here and you can call this something like peak season. And so it'll relabel it based on whatever you tell it to be called here. And then maybe you uh, make that more of a blue range. So I can come in here and say, let's make that a blue range and maybe lower the opacity of that as well, just a little bit and hit that, hit okay on that. And then you can change the anchor point of the peak season if you wanted to. You can see the anchor point again right here. You have the ability to change that. I could say that I'd rather see that uh, maybe in the right bottom outside even. You could do something like that. And you can see it moves it way down here. You could also say, well, let's just keep it in the bottom down here. You can kind of shift it around wherever you like. I might actually make it, let's see where it might make sense here. Let's put it kind of uh, not in the middle of the chart, but let's do top left like so and then you can kind of see it labeled that way. You can, of course, increase the text size of that some if you wanted to. Uh, you can change the font size. You can change the styling here as well. Maybe put a 
a line underneath it if you wanted to. So you can turn on line here, it puts a line above it in this case. But I tell you what, let's go back to putting it in the center and let's do center top. There we go. All right, so you have the ability to add in these little labels, which are kind of nice. I actually might do, maybe we do it right above it like that. That's actually pretty nice. I like that look. And then increase the, the size of it a little bit. All right, so we're identifying that blue mark there as the peak season. Well, maybe we're not done quite with doing regions on the y-axis. We could actually come back and do some additional regions. We could say from 2 million to 7 million is another region that we care about. And then what you'll notice is as you start to do these regions that they get they lay on top of each other, basically. So we created the green one first, so it's on the very bottom. Then we created the blue one. It came next. It's, it's in the middle. And then it's kind of the middle of the sandwich here. And then the top part of my sandwich is the one that we just created. And that's because the order of operations that occurs in the, the annotation section here in the top right is, uh, is affecting the way that it looks. So you can actually change the order of how these appear. So say, for example, I wanted the peak season region to always show above the other ones. I could actually shift and move these things around just by dragging and dropping. And you'll notice as I drag and drop this, it tells you and shows you where it's going to appear on the chart. So now I can see that peak season showing all the way through rather than being covered up by this new gray one. You can also change the color, of course. Maybe we'll change this one to more of a reddish kind of color and make the opacity much lower, like so. And we're starting to get together a nice looking little chart here. So we have some flexibility. We've learned a little bit of what we can do. We've seen the type of things that we can add. We can also, remember, we can add, add and change the labels here if we want, the label text. Maybe I call this one the medium volume. And I notice I have a little spelling mistake in my first one up here. I'll fix that here in a moment. And of course, you can increase the text size of this a little bit. You can change the orientation of this if you wanted to. So rather than it being in the top right hand section, like you can see right here, I could make it the top left. You can change the formatting to take out the decimal places if you want. A lot of things you can adjust. And I can always go back to my first region by selecting the first region right here, the first range. That's the range I have selected right now. You can see I have it selected because I can remove it by hitting the X. And I can tell it that I want to uh, fix that spelling mistake I made. And there we go. So very easy to fix that. All right. So that's a couple different types of annotations you can do. There's a few other types that I want to highlight as well. So uh, say, for example, that I want to select just one data point. I see this one data point here that's really standing out. It's my lowest sales that I've had. I want to highlight and look at just that one data point. To do that, you would just select the data point, like so. You can adjust the formatting just like you could previously. You'll also see there's some things that you can do with the marker and the line. If I wanted to, I can actually make that whole dot, rather than being an outline of black, I can actually make the entire black, the entire dot, our marker, all the way black. And then maybe I want to go ahead and bring in some, you know, arrows in here and kind of highlight what's going on with my data. Maybe a text box to indicate what's going on here. So I can say something in this text box like um, maybe we we knew that this was going to be low because we had to replace a sales rep and we were having to onboard a new sales rep. So we can say this was new sales rep, something like that. Something like that, just so we have some kind of way of knowing why this occurred. And you, if you wanted to, you can get rid of the border around this. By default, it puts the outline around it. You can turn that off if you wanted to just by unchecking the rectangle. Now there's no little border around it anymore. And so there's really a lot of flexibility with how you work with this one. It's a really nice chart to be able to interact with. You can always come back in here and edit it more if you wanted to. But in this case, we actually modified just a single value in here. You can also select a, a range of values if you wanted to. So say, for example, I wanted to select these three dots here all at once. You can click and drag and select those three dots at once, and it's going to show the data points for those three at the same time. So you have some ability to actually select multiples at once, or you can select an entire series by coming up to the top legend in the right-hand corner. And I can select something like California, and then you'll see the dots appear or the data points highlighted for all of the values that we have here. And if you ever realize that you didn't want to do that, you could always come up here to the annotation section and actually delete a set of annotations that you may have created by mistake. If I want to select all of these, let's say, for example, I want to add a trend line. I really want to get a trend line in here that shows the trend of the entire data set for all the different regions or all the different states. I can select the states, and you can see here it's highlighting just California now. But if I wanted to select Florida with it and New York with it, I can hold down Shift or Control here. And it will allow me to multi-select each of those regions. So I can select New York, California, and Florida all at once. And you can see all those data labels taking over here. Uh, obviously, that's too much. It's difficult to read now. So you can actually turn off the labels if you wanted to, like so. So I, I'm still, I still have them all selected. I just turned off the labels by unchecking labels here. And then I, maybe I want to turn on the trend line. And so you can see I've created a trend line here that's showing me a trend 
of where my values are going. Maybe I want to bump up the size of that trend line a little bit. Maybe not that much. And, but I can see the trend for the entire data set here now has been added into the line chart. So it's a really nice way to be able to interact with and create these different values. And by the way, if you ever wanted to just remove one of the annotations temporarily, say for example, the trend line is nice, but I don't want to look at it right now, I could actually uncheck the annotation here and it still is part of the visual. I just turned it off for a moment. I can check it back to bring it back in. Same for Florida. So Florida was my dot that I had down there. I could uncheck that and remove it for a time being. You can also add in images, te uh, text. You saw text earlier, squares, circles, arrows, lines. I could clear everything out and reset it if I wanted to. But when I'm happy with it, I can just kind of use it now and interact with it very easily. It's a chart just like anything else. I can bring in other visuals, other slicers and filters and things like that to be able to interact with this chart. Again, I mentioned earlier, the, the format section here does not really have a ton here for you. The y-axis, I already showed you, you can adjust the starting point of each of the charts. You can also adjust the ending point and you can change the text for the y-axis here. But outside of that, there are all the other things that you've seen here are pretty standard for other visuals. I might want to turn off the title because it has kind of a bad title name here. So I can turn that off if I wanted to, and it gives me a little bit more real estate as well. All right, so that's it for the chart accent line chart. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I actually really do enjoy this one myself. And I look forward to showing you our next custom visual and our next module. Thanks a lot.